Welcome back to Pentagram Prime, everyone. Today, we will be looking at exercise 5 on page 268 of Marsden and Hoffman, where we are asked to integrate the tangent of z along a closed path in the complex plane. This path is defined by a circle of radius 8 centered at the origin. All we will be discussing today is use of the residue theorem for the purposes of this specific integral. We will not be proving the theorem itself. What you really need to know is that for most practical examples involving a counterclockwise path of integration along a closed curve in the complex plane, the winding number, as described on pages 256 and 257, will either be 1 or 0 depending upon whether the singularity in question lies inside or outside of the path of integration. Residue theorem allows us to solve an integral about a closed loop by multiplying 2 pi i times the sum of the residues of the aforementioned singularities, and those singularities must not reside on the path of integration itself. The ones inside of the loop matter, and those outside of it don't because they get multiplied by 0 and disappear out of existence. The function being integrated must, of course, be analytic along the path of integration. Looking at the problem at hand, we must determine where the singularities are located in the complex plane for the function tangent of z. Let's break tangent of z down into sine of z and cosine of z before splitting z into its real and imaginary components. Using our compound angle identities, we can identify the real and imaginary components of tangent of z. But the compound identities only get us part of the way, and we need to use identities involving hyperbolic functions in order to pull the imaginary numbers outside of the arguments of the trigonometric functions. So, both the numerator and the denominator of tangent of z by themselves are analytic everywhere in the complex plane. Focusing on the denominator, we see that the only places where it goes to zero are on the real axes. Now, when the imaginary component of z is zero, the first term in the denominator is equal to cosine of x, and the second imaginary term in the denominator is equal to zero. It momentarily occurred to me to look for places in the complex plane where the first term and the second term in the denominator cancel each other. But then I realized that would be impossible because the first is real and the second is imaginary. So with the denominator of tangent of z equal to cosine of x on the real axes, the zeros in the denominator can be found using cosine of x equals zero. This gives us x equals pi n plus pi over 2, where n is any integer your little heart desires. Since the imaginary component of z is 0 at these singular points, tangent of z has singularities at z equals plus or minus pi over 2, plus or minus 3 pi over 2, plus or minus 5 pi over 2, and so on along the real axes in both directions. Superimposing the graph of the path of integration upon that of the singularities in tangent of z shows six individual singularities whose residues contribute to the value of the integral. All other singularities are outside of the closed loop and do not contribute to our answer. Going back to formula 421 on page 256, we must keep in mind that, for our purposes, the winding number i is either 0 or 1 depending upon the location of the singularity. There are only 6 residues inside of little gamma, so n is 6 for our purposes since all singularities on the real axes get multiplied by 0 in formula 421. So what sorts of residues are we dealing with here? Our first line of attack in answering such questions is to look for a way to separate the numerator from the denominator and the structure of tangent of z makes this quite simple to do. If we let g of z equal sine of z in the numerator and h of z equal cosine of z in the denominator, then we can study the behavior of these functions at the aforementioned singular points. Inserting z0 equals pi n plus pi over 2 into g of z0 gives us negative 1 to the nth power, and evaluating h of z at this same value gives us 0. Taking the derivative of h of z with respect to z gives us h prime of z equals negative sine of z. Evaluating h prime at z naught equals pi n plus pi over 2 gives us negative 1 to the power of n plus 1. Turning to proposition 412 on page 244 of Marsden and Hoffman, we see that it requires that the functions h and g be analytic at the singular point in question, that g of z naught be non-zero at that point, 
and that h of z naught be zero while h prime of z naught must be non-zero. With those requirements satisfied, tangent of z can be shown to have a simple first order pole at each of its singularities and the corresponding residue is equal to g of z naught divided by h prime of z naught. Inserting the values we just calculated for functions g and h prime evaluated at the aforementioned singularities, we see that the residue for each and every singularity is equal to negative 1. Inserting these residues into our previous expression for the integral, we get 2 pi i times negative 6 or negative 12 pi i for the integral of tangent of z about a closed loop along a circle of radius 8 centered on the origin. Hopefully you're leaving this video better off than when you started it. Till next time, this is Pentagram Prime signing off.